Hello, welcome back to Crew Call with the Scooters. I am happy to welcome our next guest, Roger Obley, who is the Creative De Director at the Pittsburgh Kids Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, thanks for having me. We are uh, delighted to have you. So let's just jump right into this. Why don't you give us um, a little background on yourself and tell us about the Pittsburgh Kids Foundation and the mission behind that organization? Yeah, um, absolutely. So I've been with PKF uh, for short, um, coming up on four years now. Actually, January 2021 will be my, my four-year anniversary wow. at, uh, at PKF um, full-time. So I've been, one of the main things that, that PKF does is run summer camps and fall retreats for middle school and high school students here in Pittsburgh. Um, that's a, a big part of what we do. Um, and I've been involved with those camps since 2009 was the first year I worked as the, the camp mm -hmm. photographer for a week. Um, and they just never got rid of me. So you must have done some good photos. <laughs> I hope so. Um, <laughs> that's a big part of my job now. But yeah, so PKF, um, the easiest way to think about it is kind of three legs, I guess, out of the, the main organization. So we have uh, PKF Camps is a kind of a sub brand that deals with those summer camps and fall retreats. Um, and then we have the we run the Pittsburgh Kids Network, which is a, a large network of youth pastors, youth workers, youth leaders uh, in and around the Pittsburgh area. Um, and once a month, when things are normal, uh, we bring everyone together for some some time of worship, some a lesson, some and, and just community, right? Um, celebrating with each other's wins. Uh, I don't know, being around each other, supporting each other through the difficulties of ministry. Um, and then we also the third leg is uh, PKF Haiti. So we work really at this point alongside a a fully Haitian led community development organization mm -hmm. called Ida D. Um, and they're in the northern city of Cap Haitian, Haiti. Um, and, and so we really get to serve as um, primarily cheerleaders and fundraisers for, for Ida D um, with, with what they are doing in that, that organization. But they've run, they run schools, uh, a small hospital and uh, children's homes. They just opened up a vocational school recently. Wow. So a lot of really incredible stuff going on there. That's incredible. And how many youth are touched by this and there's like those three segments but how many how many people are are kind of you know impacted by the, the organization yeah um we always laugh because it's it's really hard to track down like a, a, yeah. a solid number but our camp registrations typically hover around so we've gotten we run four weeks of fall retreats um mm -hmm. in the laurel highlands and i think yearly we see about I want to say like 13 to 1500 students wow. uh, come through there. And then our summer camp is a little bit smaller. Um, there's only three weeks of that, but we see anywhere from like three to 500 wow. students. That's great. And not to talk about it, but I'm sure this year, <laughs> we don't always want to just focus on it because I think everyone's like, oh, we're still in this pandemic and COVID, but it's still here and it really has uh, affected how businesses, nonprofits, organizations um, run. So being, you know, camps as one of the large segments, how have you adjusted or reached the kids or what are you thinking about for the next year? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the pandemic exhaustion is, is for real, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, th so this past year, 2020, uh, obviously has looked a lot different. Um, we're really fortunate to work with um, amazing partners in the, the camp, uh, like the, the camp and conference center space. Um, Grace Adventures, shout out to them, is our, our partner in uh, Michigan. That's actually where our, our summer camps take place. Um, but they have been on the ball um, with it. My, my coworkers and I, have joked about like their level of preparedness, which we're really fortunate uh, to, to have, but is like rivaled only by Leslie Nope, right? In, uh, in <laughs> right. Parks and Rec. So yes. like as soon as COVID really became a thing, I'm sure they broke out like the worldwide pandemic binder and just put a plan in place. But right. 
all that to say, uh, we've been able to, we've been working really closely with them uh, this past year to kind of nail down what exactly we can do safely and responsibly. Mm-hmm. Um, and this past summer, we landed on trying a modified, a very modified, very small, very short camp experience. Um, and the long story short, we, we actually ended up ending that early than mm-hmm. earlier than we had wanted to. Um, so definitely looked different. And then we, as an organization, um, for this fall decided that we weren't going to try to facilitate fall retreats. Um, it's a tight space. Mm-hmm. Part of the draw is, is being there with like three or 400 other people on a weekend. And, um, that's just not, it wasn't feasible, but fortunately our, our, our fall retreat partner, Laurelville, um, has still been able to serve smaller groups. Um, That's great. So, yeah, we've been directing as much as we can groups who are interested and, and really missing that camp experience. We've been directing them kind of right to our, our partner organizations. And part of those camps, is that just to bring the, the youth together or is there something that you want them to get out of those, those retreat type of things? Yeah, absolutely. So we are a um, a faith based organization. So they are outreach camps. They uh, preach the gospel there, um, and so that's the the biggest takeaway. But really, um, and I don't I don't want to get too heavy. But there are a, a number of different benefits that come out of being sharing an experience, a long experience that's outside of your normal routine mm-hmm. with. A bunch of other people and people who don't look like you talk like you share the same thoughts and beliefs as you right so just learning how to be in community with other people um, right. is one of the biggest takeaways we actually one of the the, the video pieces that we did this past summer um, we asked four boys from the the north side of Pittsburgh to reflect on what their camp experience over the years has meant to them. Mm -hmm. And one of them, it's so funny because I almost cut it out of the video, but he was reflecting on his main takeaways. And he said, you know, like I I just learned how to be with people who I maybe don't even necessarily like. Um, and, And normally I would cut that out, but especially a year like this year where there's so much tension everywhere you look racially especially man like that was that I don't know that that hit different that struck a different chord with me and and really kind of helped inform or remind me really um and I think remind all of us um what the the benefit of a camp experience like that is that just togetherness I mean they talk a lot about you know like the mental health and people not being together and what that's going to do for them in the future so I think that's a it's important part I'm glad that you kept that part in um to the video yeah that's incredible so I know you've had to shift some things and um came up with what together for good and also the dream team um as follow-ups are part of COVID do you want to explain a little bit about those yeah absolutely um so Together for Good is our, or was our um, pivot to, right, word of the year there, pivot, yep, but exactly. it was our, it was our pivot to a digital uh, fundraising campaign, mm-hmm. right? And we've run smaller ones uh, in the past, obviously, but each year, a large portion of our funding comes from our annual gala, like in-person dinner, uh, the the president of the org gets up and, and gives a pitch and we tell some really uh, hopefully impactful stories um, of the the organization's work um, and obviously we weren't able to do that this year and so um, we transitioned that event into a, a week long story driven campaign that we called Together for Good um, and. That was a, a ton of work, but a ton of fun, um, yeah. and really getting to work really closely together as a team because we're all remote. We have been 
since, since March. Um, but really getting to work closely together and, and work on all these different stories from every different corner of PKS work. Um, and, and then being able to share that with, uh, with our donors and, and potential donors. Wow, that's yeah, and that's that's a good shift that you're able to kind of say, okay, what can we do now to keep moving ahead? And then I know you've come up with the launch of your monthly giving program as part of it too. Yeah, um, yes, and and really that's part of um, I think just the consequence of not having camps this year uh, is that my my coworker uh, Jack, who are who is our director of programs. Um, and I have been really able to drill down on what this monthly giving program is going to look like. Um, took a lot of inspiration from nonprofits like Charity Water and New Story um, and, and learned as much as we could from them. And, and we're, we're putting the finishing touches mm -hmm. on uh, our, our monthly giving program called the dream team. So really excited about that. That's great. And what are your thoughts looking ahead to 2021? Hopefully, you know, you will be able to get kids back together and have some camps, but is there things that you're starting to think about in terms of next year? Yeah. Um, again, really working closely with our, our camp partners, uh, trying to figure out what is, what is safe, what is responsible, what's a what maintains kind of the the essence of that camp experience um, and would still be a fun um, experience to put together for for students um, but yeah we don't have anything on the calendar yet we're we're in conversation right um, and, and fingers crossed we're very hopeful that, that we'll be able to have some sort of summer camp experience uh, this year and then hopefully things are, are very much increased by the fall Absolutely. Well, and if people wanted to help volunteer, are you, is it volunteers that you're looking for, I should say, or just help, or is it donations or what, what can people do to help the organization? Um, yeah, we, we get asked that quite a bit, um, especially on the volunteer front. We, we don't have a ton of volunteer engagement opportunities, um, but we are always looking for, well, usually uh, looking for camp staff. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are students anywhere from like, early high school to uh, late college years. Typically, we also uh, bring in adults uh, from time to time. But yeah, anyone that, that's got a heart for serving kids uh, can afford to take a month off in the middle of the summer and, and live in Michigan <laughs> for that mm -hmm. month um, and doesn't mind sleeping in a bunk bed. Um, send them our way for, for camp staff possibilities. But then uh, beyond that, larger engagement opportunities. Definitely say so just um, probably by the time this is launched, our, our dream team will page will be up and, and launched officially. Um, but man, yeah, we, we would love to have you engage in that. Um, again, really excited in that for like five bucks a month. Um, you can be a part of a community of, of passionate people who are devoted to helping kids thrive. That's incredible. Well, we'll make sure to put a link to your web the website on there and information. And we just appreciate the work that you do for, for the kids. And thank you so much for being here today and sharing the story of the foundation. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.